SS UAV can launch up to 200 smaller drones in one sortie, saturating airspace with autonomous threats. On the tarmac, the GOTN's 10 meter wingspan and 3.2 ton takeoff weight stands out, but it's the modular payload bay that redefines its role. The aircraft's internal racks can carry and deploy hundreds of loitering munitions or reconnaissance drones, each with independent targeting and navigation systems. The launch mechanism uses a rotary dispenser, cycling drones out at intervals measured in seconds, not minutes. But why does this matter now with what's happening with Russia and Ukraine? In current drone warfare, most platforms like those seen in Ukraine deploy one or two drones at a time, requiring manual reloading and exposing ground crews to counter battery fire. The laser's advantage is its magazine depth, so as long as the ship's generators supply power, releasing continuous waves of drones over distances exceeding a thousand kilometers from its base of operations. This endurance is matched by its command and control suite. The SS UAV integrates with ground stations via the KU band data links, allowing real-time retargeting and swarm coordination. And each drone in the sortie can be assigned a unique flight path or converge on a single target, overwhelming point defenses and radar apertures. The system's AI-driven mission planner optimizes release timing and vectoring to exploit gaps in enemy air defense coverage. Meanwhile, the logistics footprint is extremely minimal. Because the airframe is designed for rapid turnaround, so ground crews can reload the drone racks in under 30 minutes using pre-packaged canisters. So this enables persistent operations from austere airstrips or highway segments, complicating enemy targeting calculus and reducing vulnerability to preemptive strikes. So by any measure, this changes the calculus and we can tell that China has been looking at what's happening in Russia and Ukraine and learning properly. Traditional air defense systems optimized for larger crewed aircraft or small numbers of incoming drones struggle to track and intercept dozens or hundreds of simultaneous targets. The GOTN's ability to saturate a 50-kilometer front with autonomous munitions in a single pass forces defenders to expend interceptors at unsustainable rates or accept attrition of critical assets. So now if we zoom out, the battlefield implications are very clear. In the Russia-Ukraine conflict, drone swarms have already shifted the balance of artillery duels and rear area strikes. Most current systems, however, rely on ground launchers or small quadcopters with limited range and payload. The GOTN's airborne launch platform extends the reach of drone warfare, bypassing frontline bottlenecks and striking deep into logistics nodes and command posts and also air defense sites. With that being said, integration into future Chinese operations will multiply these effects. In a Taiwan scenario, for example, the SS UAV could launch drone salvos from well inside mainland airspace, targeting naval convoys or amphibious landing zones without exposing manned assets. Its long loiter time and modular payloads allow rapid adaptation to shifting tactical priorities from electronic warfare to anti-ship roles. So if we really think about it, how would this threaten U.S. force posture? Current U.S. air defense doctrine relies on layered systems, for example, Patriot batteries, NASAMs, and short-range interceptors, each with finite magazines and hyper-shot costs. The GOTN's mass drone sorties could exhaust these defenses in hours, opening corridors for follow-on strikes or amphibious operations. Now if you think about it, the cost exchange ratio tilts sharply in favor of the attacker because a $20,000 loitering munition forces the expenditure of a million dollar interceptor. And again, this is not a moral judgment, it's an analysis of incentives and logistics. The GOTN's design leverages China's industrial base, favoring quantity and rapid production over exquisite high-cost platforms like the United States. Its modularity means new drone types, jammers, decoys, sensor platforms, and it can be fielded with minimal modifications. So put differently, the GOTN's SS UAV is not just a drone carrier, it's a force multiplier that compresses the kill chain and expands the battle space. Its ability to deploy massed coordinated drone attacks from standoff range undermines traditional air superiority and complicates U.S. operational planning. So the pace of adaptation will determine the next phase of drone warfare. As platforms like the GOTN enter the service, the threshold for saturation attacks drops and the window for effective countermeasures narrows. It's clear now in this environment logistics, sensor fusion, and rapid reloading becomes as decisive as stealth or speed. The GOTN's emergence signals a shift from isolated drone strikes to persistent scalable swarming operations. 
And now for commanders on both the Chinese and the United States side or even the Russian side, the question is no longer whether drone saturation is possible, but how soon it will redefine the tempo and geometry of modern conflict. So if you like this kind of content, do me a favor, like and subscribe for more and also leave me a comment in the comment section below.